welcome today to the Amazons. Today on the Amazons, we're going to be talking about giving back, you know, philanthropy. Rich people in our society, they come with a sense of, not just about being rich, but it comes with a sense of responsibility. So you know, if you're a big boy, or if you're a girl, or if you have hammered, as they say it, you don't just do it, <laughs> you don't just do it for yourself. You have to give back in our society. You know, there's a saying that goes, who you help? Well, today on Amazon, we're going to be talking to people that have helped, that have not only taken care of themselves, but they look out for the people around them. We're also going to be talking to organizations who have given back to the society with a lot of kindness, a lot of responsibility through their corporate social responsibility programs. You know, when, when I, growing up in Nigeria, I was brought up with a sense, Aisha and um, Silo, of um, sharing. You know, so I think it has, that has what has become part of our culture whereby we're always not just thinking about ourselves, but how to help your brother. That's what right. What do you think, Aisha, about that concept? Mm -hmm. we, we, we've always strived on the concept of saying that you are your brother's keeper. Okay. Your brother's keeper on a scope that is not as enlarged as the giving back we are talking about. Exactly. Uh, it means that take, looking after your neighbor, neighbor. you know, giving This was actually to... looking after your society now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. your your, for, instance, for your community where you find your, your, your corporate organization situated. Yes. You know, from where you come from, you'll have those kinds of things. People thinking they, they deserve much more than they are getting. Especially from, so, from maybe some of the big yes, let's let's say, oil companies and stuff. Mm. Yes. But, you know, I, I went through some of the guests that we have, and um, quite a few of them have made a lot of impact in society. You know, but some people would say, like you said, some of the organizations exactly. don't give as much mm. as do you, no, do the, you the, agree? The, the problem I have with that is a lot of the organizations in our society that are giving back are not actually giving back. Mm. Do you know it? For the right it reasons. Is, yes, it is, they, they, they are giving back in order to enhance the um, uh, uh, exploitation, uh, the, the exploitation, that? That, is, that is my opinion, okay. exploiting the situation for their own market. Do you know that? Give giving an example. Back, giving back. Break it down. No, no, no. Giving mm. back means that it's, it's of free will. Mm -hmm. You are not expecting no anything back. No expectations. No okay. expectations yes. back. But if you are giving back in order to say maybe, you know, I have this product I'm selling, or this is a brand. Or oh, to be advertised that you did so and so. And then now. you say you did so, so, and so for the society. You did so, so, and so for the society tied to a cause in yes. your organization. That is why they call it, is it corporate, corporate social, social responsibility. responsibility? Now they say they it's affinity. To. You know, okay. they say it's affinity. Affinity to what? Affinity to your own uh, market. market. Affinity to, to exploiting the situation of the community to your own marketing advantage. So it really is a very close, in fact, it's, it's a very thin line, the difference between the philanthropy and you know, so corporate, corporate social, social responsibility. responsibility. Anyway, today on the show, we're, we're going to have a lot of answers to some of these questions. But another question, though, I'm going to direct this to Silo, because Aisha started it already. Okay. It should be of your own free will. Exactly. Would you agree with me when you say, being of a certain level today in Nigeria, you almost the less privileged person almost makes you feel guilty if you don't give them. Give them. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah, Whereby the person, they don't even know that. All this was just a physique. Yes. They're you to your, you are going through you're your managing own. yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, you have your own they make issue. you feel bad, yes. They make you feel bad. But then you have to be true to yourself, whatever situation you find yourself. For instance, in my own little corner there, where I live, I realized that the road was very dark. Okay. I'm not the only one that lives on that street. So what did I do? I bought small LED lights, put it there, okay. and lit the whole place up. Oh, wow. You know, I'm not going to go and advertise it at all. Hey! <laughs> but then that is, for me, that is social responsibility. I'm reacting to my, the needs of my environment. So you've started the ball rolling, and like um, Silo here has said, it doesn't have to be you giving like the big organizations. It can be just a smile to a stranger. We'll be right back on the Amazons. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back from that short break. Before we went, we were talking about giving back. That's the topic today and we're going to be delving into not just individuals but corporate organizations who give back to the society by corporate social responsibility. So with us on the show today we're going to be talking to Mr. Lukman Johnny who is the sales director of Meccano International Limited. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We have the Nigeria. I'm a Nigeria. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Did I pronounce your name right, Mr. Johnny? Right. Lookman. Lookman. Yeah, I'm a Nigerian, like. So I, please say it loud, because he said am, he's a Nigerian, right? Yeah, I'm yes. Nigerian. My from, which, from which state? From, uh -huh. Sorry. From which state of Nigeria? River State. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Excellence. <laughs> you chose the oil producing state. Is there any reason? For no, it that? happened one night after I complete my 15 years in Nigeria. Okay. okay. Um, I am entitled for to apply for my green passport. Yes. So it happened that I was in River State. Okay. okay. And the, uh, they were very welcome. Oops. They welcomed me to their society. So. All right. Well, we welcome you. We welcome you too. <laughs> <laughs> So you know what we're talking, Meccano, your organization, your yeah, company. Yeah. Well, maybe, should I say for the wrong reasons, is a household name in Nigeria. Because everybody, most people have a Meccano generator set. You know, I we, do myself. Yeah, it is, it's correct because we came to meet the need of the power failure. Okay. So when there is... In fact, Mikao never started with the generator business, by the way. Oh, really? Oh, really? See, yeah. we didn't even know that. See? Yeah, the root of Mikano was into engineering business for repairing of uh, heavy duty equipment. Okay. Mm. This is how it started in the early 90s. And when they were in need for the generators, we decided to move to get a high value product generator, which can serve better for the uh, for the country, and that's why Perkins is well known everywhere through yes. Meccano. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's how we, uh, we move on to generator yeah, we business. We evolved. We evolved oh. to generator business. So and you saw uh, the yeah, opening and then um, took the advantage as uh -huh. business people? Well, and you know, there is a demand. People oh. need light, people need to put air conditioning, people need to preserve their food. Sure. Yes. And there were a power failure due to so many reasons. It's not oh. our business to decide why, what happened, but exactly. it happened end of the day. Oh. Yeah, exactly. So what people have to do, they cannot use a bicycle to, uh, exactly. to generate so. power. They need to generate. And Nigeria is an oil company, so technically, and the diesel should, should be cheap. So the diesel should so. be cheap. Is it cheap? Is it cheap? Because yeah, you've made a lot of money as a company. You've done well for yourself, which is a lovely well, it's, thing. It's a normal. It's, we, are, we are a business people. That's it's, why we it's are a, No, it's, and, a, it's a good uh, thing. Yeah. I was also yeah, going to are, say, you've all, you're, you're also known for giving back. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. what informed your decision to, okay, we've made so much money, let's give back to See, the society. Yeah. Particular See, course, in life, if you point your finger, there is one like this, and they three back to you. No. So it's always <laughs> take and back. You know, we are part of the society. Even if we are from a, a foreign route, but we are spending more than, out of 365 days, we are spending more than 300 days in this, in this country. country. And we are part of society. We drink yeah. the same water, we breathe the same air, we live mm -hmm. in the same houses, we drove in the same street. We eat the same bread, so we are part of the society, and it's our duty toward our societies to, to make. But what, it. What, what exactly? How do you impact? What do you give back? You know, How do there, you give back? There is the normal do you do? Uh, structure which we go for the non-organizational, non-government uh, organization like the motherless organizations. There is one one organization they told me about it. Uh, it's uh, just taking care of the youth, the ho homeless youth, which I really encourage this. It's called it Babar or something. The name is somehow... Okay, Mr. Lukman, is it that, what do you do with this um, motherless baby? Just give them food? We, no, no, we have, we have a steady donations for them. 
and on a yearly basis we provide for them. It's not food, it's about technically cash. Okay. And of course, uh, power is part of it. So, uh, okay, just to minimum. run it. What yeah, determines your time. choice? Because, you know, what does that mean your choice, you know? How, to, what? You know, we, why do you decide it has to be more or less children? Look, yeah, how do you choose what cause we, you wanted uh, to? We go for the societies or the organization. They are having an impact value on the, on the, on the, uh, on the country or on the societies. We don't, give, uh, we don't go for this individual's hand-to-hand, -hand, this okay. one. We believe on uh, something. Just let me give you an example. It's a very common example. You have one, a very low level person, which is walking hand to mouth all days. Maybe uh, somebody help you to park your car or so on. You tip him some money yeah. and there is a beggar. So which one you choose? The beggar or the person help you to, to the park your car? The person that helps you park your car most Not because he, because this guy, he is really trying hard to work to make his own living. living yeah. Why the beggar, you don't know where the end is going to be. When we are helping a, a organization like the mother, let's take it as an example. Those societies, they are, they are working hard day and night. Some people have dedicated their day and their time to help those children or those babies. So what we are giving is just is the minimum compared to the time they yeah, are Yeah, you spending. know, I, I was going to say that. All the while you were talking, I'm, I'm listening to you. Uh, you gave us the, the history of Mikano in Nigeria. You started as uh, a company that was producing heavy duty equipment, you said? We are servicing. No, servicing. We are servicing. Maybe yeah. one day, servicing. one day so Nigeria in, will start producing so like in the area in Nigeria. Of, you, you, in, yeah. you are in the area of technology. technology. Yeah. And then you are now also into a generator business, yeah. which is also technology. So one would expect that if you were going to give back, if you were going to be involved in some kind of philanthropy, it will be towards, you know, the... Uh, enhancing technology. Enhancing so technology we, are, like, uh, we have a, a good partnership with uh, Unilac. We are okay. sponsoring the engineering department. Oh. We welcome them to our... Thank you. We welcome them to our facilities on periodical basis to come to visit us to see where we are and what the technology has been evolved in terms of mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, even now the lightning engineering, we are just into it for this one. We have, we have uh, financed the uh, nursery or the infirmary the, uh, division for them. We have a periodical training sessions for them. And this is where I do it for both ways. Not, we are not a charitable business 100%. Okay. Okay. Just we need all the engineers, the future engineers, who exactly. are going to carry the Nigeria next level, mm -hmm. to know about the genuine product because we are a partner, we are a part of SAND, an active partner of SAND Organization of Nigeria. And we okay. support the fighting against the fake product coming to the country. So by being part of SAND, we have to enlighten the, uh, the new generation of the engineering. Would you if think I talk to you about uh, a breakers or an or a electrical product, you may not get the difference. Okay. But when I talk about engineer, he will enlighten other people. So okay, one can help ten. Yes. Sorry, sorry because you, you're you're saying a lot about like how you help Unilag. And yeah. Are we talking about something like a scholarship? Scholarship for a is few. in the uh, in the process. Okay. This is a good idea to have you a see? scholarship. <laughs> scholarship. Does anybody here? Aha. What 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 is scholarship? And Lukman, may I call you that? Yeah, yeah, Lukman. Yes. If you give scholarship, yeah. do you also give opportunity for internship mm -hmm. to the students? And what opportunity? You internship to, internship uh, you'll be part to, of the organization yes. in the future. Well, what if we choose not to be? We cannot force That's his choice. That's true. So in general, every, every industry attachment student come to us. Okay. And if we feel the person has a value added to himself and to us, of course, he'll be part of us. We will tell him that, hey, Mr. Engineer, finish your school and come back to us. If yes. he excel, we may sponsor his own education exactly. to finish his own school. Okay. And of course, he will be part of us. So yeah. do, you have, do you have a strategic and deliberate grant set aside as a company for this purpose? We are, we are planning it uh, for this one to go into. Now, presently now, every IT student, he, we feel that he is, can excel in his online. Of course, he will be part of the organization because we are looking for the new generation to improve it and to grow. Okay. For scholarship, this is an idea. I think it was I to study. I hope you buy into it. No, no, we, we go into it. We go okay. into it. And I'm sure that because we have some 
things going on within this uh, line because we had unfortunately the economy is getting tough but it doesn't mean that we have to resign but from the, our, there's a lot of creativity coming yes. out of that and i'm yes. sure you've listened yes. to we, yes, them them being um more focused on people going into technology because you yourself pointed out look yeah. man, that really we must up our game when it comes you said we should be producing cars Oh, yeah. did, you, did I hear you say something like we'll that? Talk about heavy duty machines. <laughs> 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 anyway, there, are, there is people. Nigeria was well evolved in the past, and unfortunately, we lost a lot of our line of production. I remember when I came in 2000 to Nigeria for the first time, I visit a plant, was a skeleton plant for Pejo. Yes. And I was surprised that yeah. Nigeria was producing Pejo. And after 10, 15 years now, we are struggling to reproduce back again cars. Oh. We as a Meccano, we have our own line to support the local manufacturer okay. because we believe on this country. This is 170 million populations with a good income of raw materials and has a value, value added on the African continent. So we move from fully imported product to assembled Assemble. locally in Nigeria. And we are the first company in Nigeria that start assembling generators. Oh. We are the first company. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, know what, look man, I, I and I think yeah. the ladies do as well, sincerely do yeah. feel your sincerity coming yeah. through because yes. you said you are a part of this country and you can identify the problems yeah. that we have and we just want to thank you for coming. We look forward to that scholarship though, amongst other things that you're doing for the channel. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, just before the break, we were talking about giving back. Because you know, as they say in our clients, you chop alone, you die, die alone. alone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but good thing with us today, we have another philanthropist. His name is Dr. Olumide Emmanuel. Help me welcome him. Dr. Olumide Emmanuel, you are the founder of Olumide Emmanuel Foundation. Yeah. And um, it's more or less become a cliche today. People, foundation here, foundation there. I'm sure you would agree with me. Yeah. What sets you apart, sir? And what uh, do you do in your family? Uh, well, um, the foundation was set up over five years ago. Okay. And uh, the purpose was to join in the poverty eradication drive. Of, of the world and also establish a positive legacy for others to follow. Now, um, I actually believe we don't have enough foundations. Okay. So if, if you have a lot of foundations springing up, they are not enough. Um, I've been doing a lot trying to give back for over 20 years. However, uh, about seven years ago, I realized that there was the need to have a formal structured way of giving back to people. Because the challenge we have in this part of the world is the fact that we do a lot of things, but we don't have systems and structures in place yes. to be able to monitor, guide, and establish a memorial of what we're doing. So many people do a lot of stuff, but because it is not structured, you don't even know they are doing things. So what do you do? Give us an example of what... Uh, well, um, the, the foundation is based on two pillars. Okay. Number one, join in the poverty education drive of the world. Mm -hmm. Number two, establish a positive legacy for others to follow so that you become a role model that people want to do what you are doing. And now when it comes to the aspect of poverty eradication, um, poverty is one of the major challenge we have in our world today. As a matter of fact, the United Nations have been able to establish the fact that to live below uh, $2 a day is poverty and to live below a dollar a day is extreme poverty. And in our nation, Nigeria, it's amazing, it's sad, but over 70% of Nigerians are poor. So in order for us to be able to solve that problem, people that have what they can give to support should come on board. So one of the things I do with our foundation is we focus more on education and empowerment. Okay. Why? Because I believe very strongly, um, I believe, 
I believe very strongly that when people are deprived from knowledge, they will not be able to help themselves. Yeah. So we are not all about giving people fish. We are about teaching, teaching them, them how to, to fish. fish. So that's, that's what we got in that. So we focus a lot on economic empowerment of people. We teach wealth creation to principles. Who? Youth, women, all manner youth, of people. Okay. Anyone that everybody needs financial intelligence. Yes. Yeah. Everybody, because see, the schools don't teach financial intelligence. Okay. Um, having a PhD in swimming technology does not make you a swimmer. So you can have PhD in economics, PhD in business administration, and yet you don't understand finances. So what we try to do is to teach people what is money. How do you make money? How do you manage money? How do you multiply money? How can you use what you have to be able to get what you want? How do you harness your gifts and your talents to be able to make a difference with your life? Because I can give you a million. Um, I can give you a million, but if you don't know what to do with the money, you're still going to come back to the same bus stop. But if I teach you how to create wealth, wealth. everywhere you go, you'll be able to see how to create wealth. Because, um, so wealth, wealth creation is all about giving. Money flows in exchange for value. Yes. Many times we have a lot of people that know how to identify and analyze problems. But life does not reward you for the problem you have identified. Life does not reward you for the problem you have analyzed. Life rewards you for the problem you solve. Yeah. Because too much analysis leads to paralysis. Wow. So what we do is we try... <laughs> Please say that again, sir. Too yeah. much, say too again, much analysis, analysis leads to paralysis. Oh, I here. plan to, I mm -hmm. hope to, I intend to. Mm -hmm. It's time to go into do it. it. Because 1,000 good intentions is not as powerful as one action. One. Yeah. So what we try to get people to know is, look, all these problems you are complaining about, that's where your money is. Yes. Solve the problem, money will flow. So we teach people how to do that, and then we now empower them with grants to be able to start the business or to expand an existing business. So we are really more into the entrepreneurial aspect because I believe that entrepreneurship is actually the solution to corruption. Entrepreneurship is the solution to unemployment. When people know how to create wealth, they won't steal. Yes. The reason why people steal is because they are not sure of the future. After these four years, after these eight years, what next? But when you know how to create wealth, you won't need to steal because what you have can be used as a capital to create what you want. Okay. So that's what we try to do with our foundation. Uh, uh, apart from all the other things we do, we deal with health. Uh, we try to you know help people with a lot. But our major core area is that's empowerment, wealth creation. empowerment, empowerment okay. yeah. education, yeah. entrepreneurial skills. That's yeah. what you, that's yeah. what you teach, and that's what your uh, your own. Um, uh, foundation. CSR foundation is about, yeah. but you know, there's. Uh, 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 I, I find it a little bit confusing. Okay. How do you differentiate between, you know, philanthropy, empowerment, uh, 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 NGO, non-governmental organization, uh, CSR? What? How do you? What? How now, do you differentiate now, simply between? Put, what's the you difference? See, we need to understand that when you say someone is a philanthropist. One of the challenges we have is that we look for people that have given one billion, 10 billion. Mm. No, no, no. You need to understand that once you have a heart of compassion and you follow up that heart of compassion with an action, you are a philanthropist. So you don't need to have millions or billions before you give. Love is sharing, caring, and giving. That's the definition of love I train my children with. So they know if you call any of my children and say, what is love? Love is sharing. Love, love is caring. Love, love is giving. giving. And that's what love is all about. Even though I've to tell you. So love is sharing. Love is caring. Love is giving. And when it comes to philanthropy, you can give your time. You can give your talent. You can yes. give your treasure. So if, for instance, you are a teacher. You are earning 15,000 naira. You are poor you can still be a philanthropist. Yes. Why? You can give your time and organize free lessons mm -hmm. on Saturday morning for children around your area well, to help so them well. with mathematics, to help them with English, mm -hmm. to help prepare them for exam. You have become a philanthropist. You may not have given any money, but you have given your you time. Volunteer you may have time. a talent. You yeah. have the ability to play the instrument. You have the ability to use the computer. Mm -hmm. And then you gather because you know what? You want free computer training? Come to my... Even if you live in a face me, I slap you. You can call them into the compound, bring out your computer, and begin to teach them yeah. how to use the computer. You are giving. 
That's philanthropy. You see, when we try to make it look so big, then everybody thinks when I become rich, I will do that. No. From whatever level you are, giving is living. Mm -hmm. okay. If you are not giving, you are not living. living. The way the world has been established, the hand that gives is at the top. top yes. And the way the life has been structured in such a way that we bring, see, the plants, they breathe in the carbon dioxide that we breathe out, mm -hmm. and they breathe out oxygen. We breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. So it's, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. So what is your own waste product is somebody else's sustainers. Hmm. What is their waste product is your sustainer. And that's the way life operates. If you don't exactly. give back, You're you not will not be able to live a fulfilling life. So everybody needs to be a giver. Hmm. All right. Um, yeah. 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 I'd like to ask a question. Okay. Um, um, you know, we're talking about uh, NGOs, behind the camera talking about NGOs getting grants and the rest and then you also said you know empowering people so I'm wondering um, where do you get your your funds from okay well um, I will try to help set a lot of things with reference to all this NGO stuff okay in this part of the world the advice I give to people because a lot of people think oh I'm gonna set up an NGO mm. because there are different groups. I'm gonna set up an NGO and then I will get grants, grants. and then people will come and support me. Exactly. But anyone that has tried that will tell you it doesn't work like that. It used to work before, I think uh, it's it stopped. doesn't work like that. Because Why? Because, so because you, you know you know you know in the in the, the part of the world we live in right right now, corruption is like second yeah. nature. And because of that, a lot of things have been messed up. Yes. Now and then there are people that feel, oh, now I have money. Let me now set up an NGO and let me give back. So what people need to understand is a lot of people, when they set up the foundation, they are setting it up and they are the ones that put their own money there. Okay. So they don't really ask for money from people because it is their own way of giving Give back to back. people. So what we do is a combination of the two. Every month, I put in money in that foundation. So every month, I'm like the main donor. Okay. So I put the money there every month and then we encourage people to partner with us and then we partner with other existing NGOs. You don't need to do things on your own. So we have some NGOs that probably have, for instance, that we are doing a, um, an event very soon now, and we are giving out 1,500 free eyeglasses. Okay. Now, in doing that, we did not buy the eyeglasses. Um, I met with an organization in the U.S. and said, well, we would like to do some things in Africa. Is there anything we can do? I said, well, no problem. Whatever you want to send to Africa, send it to us, and then we organize the meeting and give it that you want to send computer. They said, okay, we've got free eyeglasses. So they sent us 3,000 eyeglasses and said, we should pay for the courier. So we spent about 400,000 to clear it and do all the stuff. But the eyeglasses are worth millions. Mm -hmm. So last year we did one and gave out about 1,500. Now this year we're giving out the other 1,500, but we are not medical doctors. Yes. So what we have done is we have partnered with another medical NGO, NGO. that is, and then we are bringing the glasses. They are going to give it out to people. And then, so you don't necessarily have to have the money sometimes. You may, need, you may have the platform, you may have the connection, then you work together because it's all about giving back. It's all about giving back. So, so, so I've made it look now. It's like there's nothing. Yeah. yeah. Go on, you don't get anything back in return. No, no, no. Oh. You are not. You see, an NGO is a, 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 a foundation. An NGO is a charity. Yes. It's a non-profit making organization. You are supposed to set it up to give back. You are not supposed to be expecting to get something. So when you get people partner with you, they bring their money or their materials or their time. We are volunteers that give their time, so they don't give us any money. But what we need to go for, you know, like every year we have what we call the um, um, October, I think October 16 and October 17, we have the World Poverty Eradication Day, we have the World Food Day. So we go out, we give out food stuff and all this stuff. People come to do the distribution. We go to places that Mark Coco, we do quarterly um, medical outreach. So we get volunteers. They don't give the money. Some factories or companies will give drugs. Okay. Then some medical doctors will volunteer their time and come and join to make that happen. And that's the way it works. So when it comes to getting a grant, number one, you cannot get a grant as an NGO except you have existed for more than three years. You need to have three years audited account before you can even be able to get the attention. Number two, you have to be registered with a lot of organizations, with the federal government and others. So people think you just go there, you get there. It doesn't work like that. It's not, it's not like that. So okay. In the same line then, sir, yeah. how have you kept your integrity or for your own foundation with regards to, because I know, because I went to Seattle. Okay. at a point with, uh, for a disability seminar. Yeah. And I was wondering, why is not Nigeria, why did I have to sponsor myself? Okay. Why every other African country, you know, United Nations sponsored them? And they said because the corruption in our country for yeah. now has 
played, yeah. you know, yeah. too yeah. bad of a role. Yeah. So how do you protect the integrity? Well, well, number one, the fact that you are the founder of a foundation mm -hmm. does not mean you have to be involved in the foundation. Mm -hmm. I'm not involved. I'm just the founder, and I just put the money there. I don't run the foundation. All I do is to say, this is my vision, and then we have a board of trustees that runs the foundation. Okay. So all I do is I meet with the trustees twice every year. I, we, we've had our, our first meeting in January. The next meeting will be in May. And that's it for the year. So January next year. So in January we met. It's so okay. This is what has happened for the last one year. Every month the, the staff of the foundation sends a monthly report to everybody, including myself. So there is a chairman. There is a second. I'm just a founder. I'm just privileged to be the one to have set up the platform. I don't run the platform. Other people. So you can't come to me now and ask for money. I can't help you. If you come to me, I will only recommend you to the foundation and they have to do their due diligence. So it's all about, and then we have our audited account from day one. Okay. We have all, we have registered with the FCC, registered with national youth, women, we've registered with all, we have, we are part of the um, NNNGO, the National Association of non governmental okay. Organization in Nigeria. So we've done all the registration and we are one of the credible um, NGOs in Nigeria that also, so when people want to start NGOs, they send them to us as a model. Go and check okay. OES, see how they are doing it and learn from them and then before we give you attention. That, that's yeah, the way it works. started. Yeah. When you started, you did, you did say that uh, we do not have enough NGOs yet in Nigeria. Yeah, we don't, yeah. And then, uh, would you say we have enough philanthropists in, you know, comparing the fact that CSR to most companies who are in Nigeria now, to most big corporations who are in Nigeria, is used mostly for marketing drive, you know, for advertising drive to this organization. So how then do you get this organization to see that CSR and philanthropy is beyond, you know, marketing, giving okay. back, and now, then expecting something. Now, something now you see, return, you see, yeah. whether we like it or not, all these um, different nomenclatures, NGO, philanthropy, CSR, we are just saying give back. That's all. It's just giving. You need to give back. Now, for every organization, um, as an organization where you make profit from a group of people or from an environment, it is just natural, pure common sense that you should give back. For instance, what we are calling CSR today used to be end of the year party and calendar and biro in those days. Mm. It's just because we have now given it a corporate name. It has always been there. Every organization knows that at the end of the year, you have to appreciate your customers by giving them calendar yeah. or biro or do end of the year party <laughs> and they will come. But now we are saying, instead of sharing rice and sharing biro and sharing calendar, the money we are supposed to use to do that, let us do for the, something the in the environment that we can do that will make life easy for everyone. Whether you like it or not, even if your reason for doing it is because you just want to give back, you will always get back. Giving will always produce an harvest. The harvest will come in goodwill. The harvest will come in favor. The harvest will come in patronage. So you may not be doing it because you want them to patronize you. But once you do it, whether you like it or not, they will love you. Because you are doing what is right. They will patronize you. So it, it, the, it's not supposed to be for a marketing drive, but whether you like it or not, it will end up pulling people to you. Because once you give, you must you get food. You, I mean, you cannot um, have put it any better. Yes, I mean, yes he's I, nice. Me, I am nice. fed. <laughs> and I thank you, sir, for coming. You Thanks have come, you have given. Everybody out there has heard it. You don't have to have billions. You can ha just have your talent, your time, and your... Treasure. And treasure. your treasures. Time, talent, treasure. Time, three, talent, three, three, and three treasures. Teams. Please, we will be back again, same time. And you can continue the conversation on our social media platforms. Like us on Facebook at the Amazons. Go on to Twitter and follow us at the Amazons NG. Same time next week. Totally different subject, though. Take care.